ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to differentiate between Apostle Arome and then living witness Ken Paul, who the Lord described as Saint Paul to me. I'm going to teach you some mysteries which God revealed to me concerning these two men of God. And then before I do that, I would like you to listen to this very man of God, Living Witness Ken Paul. I remember in my previous message, my very previous message, I was teaching here concerning God's passion for the church. That his cry is that souls should be won. That wisdom in this kingdom is so winning. Not building of houses, buying of cars and uh, other uh, ambitions regarding the things of this world. Not acquisition of wealth and accumulation of them, but so winning. And I told you that is what matters to God. God is not a businessman. And then you must understand that the Bible said the testimony of two or three is true. I remember in one of my previous messages, I was able to align the teachings of Paul and the teachings of Peter. Peter was teaching in 1 Peter chapter 3 and Paul was teaching in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and they were talking about the same thing but different vocabularies, different grammar but they were pointing at the same thing, they were hitting the same thing. So that is why the Bible says one spirit, one baptism, one doctrine, one faith. When men of God begin to give different perception about God is a sign that they are speaking from their flesh. Someone was telling me that, uh, you know, the reason why sometimes it looks as if they are contradicting is based on their perception. You know, we have different perception. I told him that the gospel should not be taught by human perception. It should be taught by divine intentions. What we bet life is intention, divine intention. What I come here to teach you people is divine intention. Why those things were inspired, those things that are noted in the scripture, they came by the inspiration of God. And if they came by the inspiration of God, as the Bible said, all scriptures are what given by the inspiration of God, then you should understand that when they were, when these things were happening, and why these teachers were teaching, or the prophets were prophesying, or even the law was prophesying, that there was an intention, there was a connotation behind the denotation. So the things we see, there is an intention behind it. These are the things that we bet life. These are the things the Holy Ghost will help you discover. And these are the things we should teach. So when we are able to discover divine intentions that are backing scriptures, we'll be able to help men to come in alignment to the wisdom of God. And what they will receive eventually after hearing our voice is life eternal, not death. But when we begin to give human perception at the end it will fight perfection it will it won't help these people to grow as a matter of fact what it will bet is confusion because the church will experience division when men begin to listen to apollos and apollos is saying something different and they begin to listen to paul and paul is saying something different and they listen to peter now you see so there will be division but if apollos Paul and Peter come to teach Jesus and then the people realize that all that they ever taught is one. They will what? Come to unity. That is why Paul was able to bring unity to the body of Christ because he said, I, Apollos, Peter, we are all for you and you are for us and we are what to Christ. He said, when I came, I didn't teach myself but rather I taught Jesus and that is what Peter taught and that is what Apollos taught. So he said, even when I baptized, I baptized in the name of Jesus, not in my name, even though God didn't send him actually to focus on baptism. But the very few people he baptized, he baptized in the name of Jesus. So what is my point, child of God? We may have different denominations, but when our voice is saying the same thing, there won't be division. But when men are giving perceptions, not divine intentions, there will be confusion and there will be division. And such church will never come to perfection. And it is the will of God that the church will come to perfection. I'm going to allow you to listen to this man. When you are done listening to this man, I just want you to compare what this man is saying with what I said in my previous message. And see if we are in the same boat or if we are contradicting. Someone recently sent me this message. And when I was done listening to him, I said, wonderful. I said, the message came at the right time. So I decided to bring it up to you. Because God spoke to me concerning this man before someone sent me this very message 
this is my first time of listening to this particular message but i've heard this man speak before god personally sent me to him all these things i will tell you once i'm back after you are done listening to him so now that this man sent me this very message of this man of god i i, I said okay this is in alignment with what i taught previously let me just use this opportunity to talk to you about what god has revealed to me concerning this man and apostle arome god speaks every day but we can't come out and say all that god said instantaneously we bring them out procedurally or gradually so i see this time as a due time for me to reveal this mystery to you god bless you as you listen i'm coming back celestial restored body no more deformity nothing on earth has meaning in heaven like souls and only soul savers are celebrated in heaven no one celebrates any other miracle in heaven than saving of souls because miracles are now normal to them all christians are meant to walk in the miraculous not as a big deal but as normal in heaven only soul winners are celebrated champions christ jesus made it clear and told me to warn the Christians that anyone who takes evangelism and soul winning lightly has no part with him. Inviting people to your hell-bound church just to merely increase membership and to boast of your numerical increase is shop-right nonsense that brings no joy to heaven. Supermarket Christianity is from the pit of hell. Jesus said, anyone claiming to be saved but not laboring to save others is sold. You are saved to save others. A tree that bears no good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. Matthew chapter 7 verse 19. Anyone ashamed of Christ and his word before men is doomed. Mark chapter 8 verse 38. If you deny Christ before men, you are finished. Matthew chapter 10 verse 33. Every Christian is a watchman that must account for souls. Ezekiel 33 verse 6 Awake to radical true soul winning now at all cost. So much happened in the revelation experience as I have shared in some of my books. The Lord took me to my mansion and I spent some time there. He said to me, I want you to see as my witness so that you can witness to them that I have finished preparing their mansions in heaven and coming back for them, as I said, but many are not yet ready. As the Lord said this, many of the mansions began to sound alarms. I asked the Lord what was going on and he replied, many people, including ministers you least expect, are about to lose their mansions in heaven because of sin and compromise. You are here on a special assignment to warn humanity regarding eternity. Jesus showed me that Evangelism Street is the best part of heaven reserved for addicted and committed soul winners. He showed me a list of names of ministers celebrated on earth but rejected in heaven. He said, these ones have their rewards on earth and in hellfire. All ministers who the heartbeat of God, which is souls, is not their heartbeats, are in that list, no matter who they are. I am not a respecter of persons, but respecter of those who follow my footsteps. I came for souls, not gold. Read Revelation chapter 2. Worldliness is killing today's churches, and they think it has something to do with Christianity. What most people call evangelism or soul winning today is transferring lukewarm Christians from church to church. This is just increasing the number of the pastor's goats, not the lordship, which enables them to smile to their banks while heaven is sad. Membership of any church or religion does not write your name in the book of life. You must be genuinely born again and forsake sin or you will miss heaven. Only Jesus saves. If you are not fruit-bearing, your Christianity is fake. 
heaven-minded ministers and churches are fast disappearing from the earth. This is most dangerous. What will it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? The Lord told me to tell his people to start practicing living in heaven now as they are no more earth citizens but citizens of heaven. He said to me, you are already scattering if you are not gathering with me in soul winning. Where is your heart and your treasure? Jesus said, all the blessings that are making them fall prey to false prophets are already in heavenly places waiting for their collection. Ephesians chapter 1 says that we have been raised with Christ in heavenly places and seated with him at the right hand of God, far above principalities and powers, with all things under the feet of Christ and our feet because we are in him. We are already seated on the throne of authority and power in Christ Jesus. This is the last day's warning of love. Read Revelation chapter 3. I was shown how Sister Stella was celebrated when she arrived in heaven at the end of her life on earth as she slept in the Lord. If you see this and the glory this sister is enjoying now and for all eternity, you will know why the devil do not allow people to become soul winners but keeps them busy with nonsense. All these entertainment churches and ministers plus the prosperity preachers are in reality hellfire embassies bringing embarrassment to heaven. After the whole experience, which I cannot narrate here but will continue in subsequent messages if the Lord permits, the Lord said to me, It is time for you to go back and share this to bring as many that are willing and obedient to heaven. I then said to Jesus that I would rather want to stay there in heaven with him. He said to me, If you do not go, many will not make it to heaven. I have chosen and ordained you to bring as many as possible here. Go and prepare my people for my return in the urgency of heaven. I have shown you your mansion and crown. I have given you also the mercy of David and that assures your return. You are very dear to my heart along with the others who are also minding the mandate of heaven to depopulate hell and populate heaven. Many have failed me and my labor shall not be in vain. Multiplied grace abound toward you. Go and bring the remnants in. He further said to me, Warn the people, they want me as Savior, but not as Lord, and this cannot be possible. Now Jesus cannot be your Savior if you don't make him your Lord. Beloved, a bride is too beautiful to carry spots and wrinkles. You are either a friend of Jesus or a slave to sin and Satan. While Jesus and the others were escorting me back, I wept until I came back to this realm. Beloved, the worst thing that can happen to you is to miss heaven and end up in hellfire after Christ has done it all for you. Making heaven must be your greatest achievement on earth. Nothing on earth is worth missing the eternal beauty and glory of heaven for. My heart bleeds for those who are still playing church and religion. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior now. Repent from sin genuinely. If you miss heaven, you will not miss hell. Look for heavenly conscious churches and ministers and connect with them now. Rapture or death could be any moment. Share this in the urgency of heaven for the time is at hand. Let it get to the ends of the earth as commanded. God bless you. Now that you have listened to this man of God, I believe it is very clear, articulate and precise to you that the cry and the passion of God is so winning. 
so willing this is the voice of truth you just listen to the voice of heaven these are voice that are crying from the wilderness you understand now these are voice that are preparing the way these are end time voice that god has sent to you to help you understand the manner of time we are and understand the the cry of heaven not physical things not substance now let me let me reveal a mystery of this man to you this man is an apostle sent by god to to prepare the church to prepare the saints and not just to prepare the saints to cut off occasion from them that seek occasion just like i taught you before what god sent for to do what he has sent me to do this is the same work god sent this man to do and then i was in a vision of the night and i i saw this man standing and he was teaching and then before he started teaching i i, I heard god and god said called him his name is living witness ken paul but when god wanted to address him he said saint paul saint paul in other words he's already a saint even while he's young ex so why did god address him as a saint because he's a man that is walking in the path of righteousness and he's teaching righteousness he's carrying out the assignment god has given to him god didn't stop there god called him the chief of the apostolic the chief of the apostolic so while i was hearing god saying this god now told me that i should stop teaching there was a time i stopped teaching here on youtube not this last one there was a time i stopped teaching and later i came again before this last one i paused for a while and i came again so now i i don't just pause for nothing i pause for some reasons i have always told us here that we are witnesses and no witness should go and witness without encountering something you are a witness because there is a testimony there is something you encounter there is something you saw you witness so it is that thing you go out to go and report so if we don't have report we can't come out i gave you instance of two tithing bearers in the days of david when he had issue with Absalom, and when Absalom died the, the one of them said allow me to go and bear tithing and joab didn't allow him so until joab sent another man and that first person was persistent then joab was now what subdued he now allowed the man to go and what bear tithing and these people who go to bear tithing don't just go to the king or go to the people without having an information it was a tithing bearer that brought a news that killed Eli. it was what he saw in the battle that he went to report so we that are witnesses of jesus we must witness something in the closet so it is what we now witness in the closet that we come to teach the people in the public that is why jesus said whatever i reveal to you in what in the closet go to the world upper room go to the public and what teach it so that is why when the apostles came they were witnessing what jesus told them so even when the pharisees and the priests tried to stop them they were unstoppable because they knew what they saw and they knew what they encountered and they were certain about it so no man could stop them Paul said, no man can stop me of this boasting in the region of asia so you must understand that a man who has encountered something comes with boldness to present the things which he has encountered because he knows this testimony are true so if you have not witnessed anything you are not permitted to come out and teach that is why a man of god can pause because what i come to teach are prophetic what i come to teach are mysteries that can save many not religious teaching i don't just open bible and say oh today is a teaching day let me just come and teach things that we profit nothing no i come here to teach you revelations things that you will hear and as you open the portals of your heart and begin to receive them with faith they begin to eat spiritual particles in your life that can help you resurrect and appear in the place where god is waiting for you so he can have koinonia with you these are the things god has sent me to teach and if i must come to teach them i must witness something first not messages that are boring not messages not repetition of a particular message no because there are so much god wants you to know and for him to help you know these things he must raise a man who has been what well polished that can what take you on the journey to these things so when i i stopped teaching at a point it was because of this man because god told me he said stop teaching for the now listening to him all these things i was seeing in the vision so when i came out of the vision i had to go and search for him on youtube at a point in my life i i i, I heard one of his message many years ago but after that time i was not addicted to him i i wasn't 
too familiar with him but i know oh, i stumbled onto his message someone sent it to me but after that time there was no connection anymore not that i even know him physically you understand so but when god now told me this i had to go to youtube and look for him searched his name and i started listening to his messages and i was blessed before i resumed again so i said they teaching you this mysteries which god revealed to me concerning this man in this vision but because of so many messages and so many revelations i needed to unveil to you i couldn't know bring it fit it in so i was waiting for the right time and i believe this is the right time for me to reveal this to you so in that vision in continuity of what i was saying in that vision when god said he's the chief of the apostolic and called him saint paul he said go and listen to him and stop teaching and i saw the man teaching all of a sudden apostle arome came and saw what the man was doing and wanted to act like the man or start doing what the man was doing already by setting what the church in order you know rebuking pastors revealing false prophets and false teachers so why Arome came to do that the spirit was rebuking Arome because it wasn't the spirit that assigned Arome to do what he wanted to do no he sent himself to do that now how will you know the fruit we tell and intentions we tell so if you follow this man's pedigree you will discover that his focus is so winning and he comes with humility of the spirit and purity of god's word to teach these things but when you listen to arome what you will see is politics what you will see is campaign what you will see is a man with pride and ego trying to pull others down so he can attain the higher position what you will see is a man who is criticizing the just and the unjust now the clearest way for you to know this is when he started persecuting prophet tb joshua and speaking against synagogue now a man who is sent by god is not sent to go and attack god's own but rather he's sent to attack god's opponent and enemy he said he that gathereth not with me scattereth he that buildeth not with me destroyeth so a man who goes to destroy what god has built already so such a man is not sent by jesus so such a man is sent by himself or by the devil that is why if you study your bible very well you discover that there are people who go into the world to ask things that the true saints are coming to ask they go ahead of them why is satan sending them so that he will batter the heart of men and corrupt their mindset concerning that kind of ministry so that when the original people come to portray such ministry in the world you won't believe them because those who came forth has polluted that kind of system but the truth is that when these original people comes their righteousness will differentiate them from those who are false so this man is described as what the chief of the apostolic god called him saint paul why because he's a man who goes to teach righteousness he's preparing people for the end time so my point is that there are missed multitude missed ministers in the world and they are they, they are acting alike but you must know the difference now this man does not call names of men of god but he reveals their errors and if you are sensitive enough you can tell the man of god he's talking about he has his reason but god sent me and i came i start calling names for a reason now if you remember jesus said that john came he was not eating he was not mingling with sinners and they called him a devil but when the son of man came and started eating and was mingling with sinners they called him a devil also a friend of public publicans and a drunkard a glutton now why did god bring those kind of dispensation so that men will not give excuse and say oh they didn't explain this dimension of god that is why they were not saved that is why one time jesus came and started rebuking the nation and the generation he was sent to and said that sodom and gomorrah will rise up in the day of judgment against you the queen of sheba will rise up nema will rise up etc now why because these people did not experience the kind of gospel his time experience they didn't express the kind of miracle his time experience yet they came to god why some perished but he now said had they been they heard what you heard they would have been saved so what i'm trying to say is that better opportunity was given to his time unlike those who existed before his coming to the world now god has sent the man of god to teach and he was not calling names and men who are dumb and daft minded refuse to understand the man of god is talking about because he's not calling names so even after the whole explanation you can't within yourself and just compare the message with men of god and not those who you should run from rather you just don't believe that everybody is just everybody 
uh, uh, all the men of God are doing the work of God. You cannot differentiate them and know the ones that are standing in their path of destruction. So God now sent me and I started calling it so that it will be more clear to you. So you won't say, oh, because you don't have the gift of designment, that is why you could not differentiate between false ministers and just ministers. Now I call names and I tell you people who are called by God, but they have missed it. And I also tell you people who are not called by God at all. So you won't have excuse on the last day. God keeps on giving us privilege so that we won't say, oh, we didn't have this kind of privilege. So God is so merciful, so generous and altruistic to our time because in, on, on the last day, it will be very terrible. There will, nothing like mercy we exist. So this is why I come to call names and attack and do open rebuke because God is crying for soul. Souls are perishing. You will end up with the man you follow. So if the ships are tied to blind men, definitely they will end up with these blind men in the pits. So the only way to stop this ship from falling, these blind people, is by calling men of God by their name and attacking them concerning the wrong things which they do. Not maliciously, not out of hatred, but out of what? Passion for souls, the love of God. And if they will hear me and repent from their iniquities, they too will be saved and their members. But if they refuse to repent, they will perish. But before them and their members perish, let me win some. Because we can't win all. God bless you. As you share this message, you like this message. This is the voice of heaven, son of David. Wisdom is crying in the streets of YouTube.